for Edinburgh and Tom Fleming. It's late summer evening in my hometown of Edinburgh, enjoying its 42nd International Festival of Music and the Arts. It's a city dominated by the rock behind me. On that rock sits Edinburgh Castle, where nightly for the 39th year in succession, above the rooftops of the Grass Market, Princess Street beyond, and the Royal Mile down to the east, is performed the most famous military tattoo in the world. And we are happy that wherever you are watching in the world, once again, you can join us. My martial bugles sound there for a queen who graced my walls a thousand years ago. Margaret from Hungary, devout, serene. Tonight, her Magyars dance for you below. I have seen battles. I have watched princes fight. But that's no way for me to welcome you you're here for pageant, musical delight. I give you now my Edinburgh tattoo. Above Edinburgh, composed by Major David Price, Scots Guards, the Tattoos Director of Music. The Pipes and Drums. To the tune, Highland Rory, the massed pipes and drums of seven bands open the Edinburgh Military Tattoo of 1988. The pipes and drums of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, the 1st Battalion, the Royal Scots, the Royal Regiment, the 1st Battalion, the Royal Highland Fusiliers, Princess Margaret's own Glasgow and Ayrshire Regiment, the drums and pipes of the 1st Battalion, the Gordon Highlanders, the pipes and drums of the 1st Battalion, the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders, Princess Louise's, the Seaforth Highlanders of Canada Association, and the Tobruk Memorial Pipes and Drums from Melbourne, Australia. The senior pipe major, to the right of the front rank, is Pipe Major John Bruce, Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. And the 6-8 march is Mrs. MacDonald of Uik, composed by the late Pipe Major Donald MacLeod, MBE, affectionately known throughout the piping world as We Donald.
The senior drum major, drum major Bert Tompkins, the Gordon Highlanders, gives the command. And the pipes and drums move off in 2-4 time to the tune, the Inverness Gathering, commemorating the northern meeting held annually in Inverness. And when they've reached the centre of the arena, the pipers will form a hollow square with the 36 drummers and eight drum majors in the middle. Five tunes in the static set, a slow air, the Strathspey, Dalna Hasig, the Jig, Paddy O'Rafferty, the Reel, the Maid Behind the Bar, and the Retreat March, the Bloody Fields of Flanders. But first, the slow air, Loch Boysdale, composed by Pipe Major John Wilson after a visit to South Uist, with harmonies by Major John Allen.
play by the Mass Pipes and Drums is under the personal supervision of Major John Allen, Director, Army Bagpipe Music, and Pipe Major Gavin Stoddart, Chief Instructor at the Army School of Piping. The bands now reform to the tune, the Midlothian Pipe Band. of my youth ending a fine display of army piping and drumming at its very best. really heartening display of skill and courage on motorbikes performed by youngsters from London's Docklands and the areas round about. It's the first visit to Edinburgh by the Honda Imps. The two youngest members of the team are only five years old and the other mascot is seven. And the voice you will hear is that of the Imps' own commentator who travels with them, Bill Everett. So now it's the turn of the older members of the team, but still the average age is only 13 years. And now to give you a 16-man formation ride, and they must remember in the order of 110 different maneuvers. For every hour spent riding in these East End kids spend six or more on maintaining and cleaning the bikes. And if they get into trouble with the police or play truant from school, they lose their place in the team. Some of them spend 11 years with the imps. They're retired at 16. Dedicated to um, helping youngsters from London's East End to achieve their true potential. The organisation, which is based in a disused warehouse at the Royal Victoria Dock, encourages youngsters to share in team adventures, and some of which have taken them as far afield as the Sahara Desert. And the team is, incidentally, also open to girls.
Well, I think you'd agree, ladies and gentlemen, that that was the ultimate test of teamwork. Well, I did say they'd be back, and here they are, the five-year-old mascots, to display the skills of balance. Now, these are tricks and not stunts. They have a purpose to them for it demonstrates to their leaders and trainers that these young lads have mastered throttle control and balance. And as they pass back over the drawbridge, cast your eyes. Cast your eyes, if you would, to the pit area for the preparation for what is surely the most traditional of all the items expected of any self-respecting motorcycle display team. Ladies and gentlemen, the pyramid. Up to 21 boys mounted on five Honda machines. Just notice when they take the bend, the link men between each motorcycle, if the machines part company, their valley lessons begin as they do the splits or even something far worse. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen the young mascots demonstrating their skills. We'd just like to give you one example from their repertoire of the type of tricks the older lads get up to. And this is 13-year-old Russell Kappa demonstrating what I believe the boys call the spinner. Oh, I've just discovered, ladies and gentlemen, that in the audience we have a member of the world-famous record book. And one of our young imps would like to get his name into that book. Would you mind off if we broke away from the program just for a few moments to let young Daniel Sparks get his name in the record book. Would you mind that, ladies and gentlemen? Well, if I, I hear your sanction, but I'm afraid we'll need your help even further, because Daniel needs to jump at least 20 of his colleagues to get his name into the book. So if you want him to go for the record, would you just give a big yes? yes. Well, here they come then, a few more. But he still needs more if it's going to be the record, so we need another great big yes if it's going to be for the record. That wasn't a very good yes, ladies and gentlemen. It's only brought one boy out. So if we're going for the record, we need the other two lads. So one great big yes, and we're going for the record. One, two, and away you go. That's super, so we're now going for the record. In that case, may I just give a little advice, if I may, sir, to the scrutineer down there. You must give us confirmation of the numbers. Count the number of helmets, sir, multiply by two. That'll give you the number. The number of helmets, duty officer. <laughs> well, now you see how he gets results from these young men. Right, now quiet everywhere, please, while young Daniel Sparks goes for this record. Quiet everywhere. think he was going to do it, did you? Well, obviously that was just a bit of fun, but it's the type of tricks the lads get up to in their winter training during the cold months. And just a little jump like that gives them the experience so that eventually young Daniel will hopefully replace our team captain who has to retire this year, and perhaps next season he'll be jumping over the Honda Shuttle motor car, the team's car, and his teammates who sit aboard this Escargo motor car, terrain vehicle, or whatever it's called, and uh, the ramp that is now being put into place will be handheld by six of the team captain's teammates. Now, children watching, please note that the duty officer checks every single item that these lads perform. Nothing at all is taken to chance. And he seems to be satisfied now, so any moment now, the team captain will come. Here he comes. Well now the team mascots will lead their colleagues back into the arena to bid you farewell 
and to thank you for, for being a fantastic audience responding to their every move. Well now, as the Docklands Honda Imps is in fact a youth organisation, not just a display team, it's only right and proper that one of the junior members, in fact the senior mascot if you please, young Matthew Summers will take charge of this parade and give the salute. <laughs> And Sergeant Major down there, watch out for your job. And Matthew Summers is only seven and a half. Well, bravo to the young devils. The audience is thrilled with the team spirit and the discipline of these East Enders. Have certainly taken the imps to their hearts at every performance. Wasn't that a brave display, ladies and gentlemen? From Melbourne, in the Australian state of Victoria, come the Tobruk Memorial Pipes and Drums with the Colonial Dancers. Recalling in Australia's 200th birthday year, some of the folk dances handed down by the settlers of last century. This is a Circassian circle, and the tune is Flick Go the Shears. the dance is Melbourne Town, known last century as the dancing capital of Australia. And the tune is The Road to Gundagai. Many of the young dancers are also folk musicians who play instruments from the fiddle and the penny whistle to the push bass and the didgeridoo. But this is a new experience for them, dancing to the pipes. Overleaf Waltz is Botany Bay. The colonial dancers were formed in 1974 to collect and record traditional Australian social dances and to demonstrate and teach their formations and steps. It's something they do not for professional reward, but for the enjoyment and the friendship which they find in this sort of dancing. And the heel and toe polka is danced to Bound for South Australia. These dancers will cheer you down under as you watch this tattoo on New Year's Day in the height of your warm summer. And drum major Mike Sun now will give the word of command to the pipes and drums.
The band are now coming out of their tea formation, Tea for Tobruk. A birthday is a time for remembering as well as celebrating. We in Britain don't forget that twice this century Australia has joined the old country in its hour of need. The cost to Australia in her young men and women was high and we are conscious of these sacrifices. In particular, we remember tonight the siege of Tobruk as a symbol of Australian British comradeship in adversity. In 1941, in Tobruk in North Africa, 15,000 Australians with a Polish brigade, Indian and British units, including the Black Watch, held off Rommel's Africa Corps for 242 days. They were insulted by being called by Lord Haw Haw, Rats of Tobruk, a title they still wear with great pride. At the top of the esplanade, you can see a banner party with a banner with the unit insignia of each Australian unit at Tobruk. Each piper carries a pipe banner with an Australian unit insignia and the Polish Brigade. You can also see the Australian flag and the Polish eagle. The banner party is made up of surviving rats of Tobruk. The Tobruk Memorial Pipes and Drums, a living memorial to the young Aussies who fought and died in North Africa almost half a century ago. Ramillies, the drum horse of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, presented to the regiment last year by Her Majesty the Queen. The drum horse is traditionally the only mount in this regiment which isn't grey. The Royal Scots Dragoon Guards were formed in 1971 from an amalgamation of two regiments with old and cherished traditions. The Third Carboneers and the Royal Scots Greys, they are Scotland's only remaining cavalry regiment. Their pipes and drums and their regimental band are famed throughout the world. They played last year for Pope John Paul at the Vatican and for President Reagan at the White House. The tune is the 79th Farewell to Gibraltar. Mounted kettle drummer, Corporal Andy Field, wears a white bearskin unique in the British Army. First worn just over a century ago and brought into use again 51 years ago at the coronation of the Queen's father and mother, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth.
Pipe Major John Bruce was the soloist and Bandmaster Thompson was conducting, yes of course, Amazing Grace, the arrangement which was such a hit for the regiment's bands in 1971. Drum Major David Gilfillan gives the command, and the bands lead the esplanade to the Bonnie Lassa Fivey. The Scots Dragoon Guards are an armoured regiment. The pipes and drums you just heard are played by trained tank crewmen. Here are two Scorpion armoured cars tackling a couple of problems on the castle ramparts in a more economic and sophisticated way than some of the lengthy assaults this old fortress has experienced. In November, the regiment joins the British Army of the Rhine as part of the NATO defences in Western Europe. And these Scorpions will be replaced by 60 of the new Challenger tanks. Sousa's Semper Fidelis, played by the massed military bands, brings to the Esplanade the regimental bands of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, the Scots Guards, the Royal Highland Fusiliers, and the Gordon Highlanders, the Light Infantry Salamanca Band, the Normandy Band of the Royal Green Jackets, and the Bugles of the 2nd Battalion, the Light Infantry. Hundred and fifty years ago, Georges Bizet was born in Paris. From Carmen, an arrangement by the Tattoo's Director of Music, Major David Price, Scots Guard.
now, Lieutenant Colonel Duncan Beat's arrangement of marching with Harry Lauder. Sir Harry died aged 79 in the year of the first Edinburgh Tattoo, 1950. Some of the tunes he made famous are Dobber Mori, I Love a Lassie, Saftest to the Family, and Keep Right On to the End of the Road. Drum Major Raymond Kerr, Scots Guards, gives the command, and the mass bands, except the musicians of the Light Division, will leave the Esplanade to a new Dutch arrangement of Auf Wiedersehen. After an absence of 10 years, the bands and bugles of the Light Division are back in Edinburgh. The two bands, the Light Infantry Salamanca Band and the Normandy Band of the Royal Green Jackets, were formed three years ago when all the Light Division bands were reorganised. The bugles are those of the 2nd Battalion, the Light Infantry. The Riflemen's traditional quick march is 140 paces to the minute, a reminder of their early role as flank, advance or rear guard to a marching force and their need for swift movement and the element of surprise, hence perhaps the earliest form of camouflage, their green tunics with black buttons. The march is mechanized infantry.
the Quick March Faust is arranged by the bandmaster of the Salamanca band, David Burton. And the splendidly mustachioed figure leading the bands is bugle major Dennis Robertson, who retires immediately after the tattoo, having completed 24 years' service. Finally, bandmaster Ian McGilligot of the Normandy Band of the Royal Green Jackets conducts his own composition, a fanfare in honour of Sir John Moore, under whom the Light Division fought in the Peninsula War. Budapest, the first appearance in Great Britain of the Hon Veith Ensemble of the Hungarian People's Army. Hon Veith simply means defender of one's native land. Founded 40 years ago, the ensemble has given 13,000 performances in 26 countries. From the rich folklore of their homeland come the music and the traditional steps of this wild drover's dance, the whips and the sticks recalling the centuries-old weapons and tools of the medieval herds driving their valuable cattle and sheep across the dangerous mountain passes.
a song of village girls in praise of the precious joys of youth. Love, oh love, why can't you be on every leaf of the tree? By coincidence, this is the very day on which the Hungarian nation celebrates its founding in the year 1000. 919 years ago, a young English princess brought up in exile in the Hungarian royal house married King Malcolm III of Scotland. Queen Margaret lost her husband and her eldest son in the same battle 24 years later, and she died when the news was brought to her. The tiny chapel which still bears her name is within the walls of Edinburgh Castle. And there, earlier today, these young Hungarian girls sang in her honor. The most famous of all Hungarian dances, the Chardas.
Most welcome visitors from Hungary, the vigor and the smiling faces of the Hon Veith Ensemble, who were accompanied by the music of the Hegedurge Folk Band. So, once again, we've come to the finale, when all the 550 participants in the 1988 tattoo muster together on the esplanade. The massed pipes and drums enter to the march, Glenda Rule, Highlanders. Pipes and drums pass through the imps on their motorcycles and they are followed by the massed military band. The drum horse and the greys of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guard. The Cock of the North, the Guard of Honour. The dancers from Hungary and the dancers from Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, our finale has assembled that there's one group you haven't seen before. And there, right at the front of the parade, is our guard, who are found by the 1st Battalion, the Gordon Highlanders. <laughs> and they have with them their new regimental colour, presented to the battalion last month by their Colonel-in-Chief, the Prince of Wales. The evening hymn, the 23rd Psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd, Last Post, and the lowering of the colours.
lights out. As high above the midnight city, a lone young piper, Lance Corporal Colin Fairbairn, 1st Battalion, the Royal Scots, plays Sleep, Deary Sleep. Should old acquaintance be forgot, and never brought to mind, should old acquaintance be forgot, and all lang syne. The National Anthem. the march off. One of the Hungarian girls went up to the guard commander in his Gordon kilt before a performance and said to him in halting English, you are pretty. No, he replied, you are pretty, I am smart. Well, smart and pretty, they leave the Esplanade.
were no war to bide a war, say the musicians in the uniforms of six regiments. And lastly, the Black Bear, the march to which all jocks return to barracks at the end of the day. And so, until another summer is by, and another year has become Auld Lang Syne, we send you our greetings from Scotland, and bid you good fortune and good health until we meet again. operations was well coordinated.